Hi, I'm Amy. Today I'm going to be sharing some recipes with you. I'm really excited about these. If you're new, I'm a wife and a mom to two toddlers and I really like to share what I'm cooking for my family. So I'm going to get started with some chocolate malt cookie dough cups. I've never made this recipe before, but I thought it sounded good. So I need 12 ounces of chocolate chips. I'm also going to be doing pizza rolls and a fresh French onion pasta. Hopefully I'll have time for all of that over here. But I'm gonna get started by just measuring out 12 ounces of these chocolate chips. This is a 24 ounce bag. And then I'm gonna use two tablespoons of coconut oil. I just opened a new container. And then we're just gonna melt this in the microwave. And the reason I'm starting with this recipe is just because we have to freeze it for a few minutes before getting started with the other steps of this recipe. So I figure let's get started with this and then I'll go ahead and put the water in for the pasta and I'll show you the pizza dough I've already made. I'm just gonna go ahead and microwave this. I'll do it for 30 seconds at a time until it's melted. I just microwaved it for a minute and a half and I think this should be good enough. I'm just going to stir this until it's completely melted. I think a minute and a half should work. That's how long I did it for. The recipe says to use a muffin tray, like a 12 cup muffin tray. But I have this mini muffin tray and I think that'll work really nicely for this recipe. It'll just be a bit smaller snacks. So I think it'll work well. I think this looks good. It still has a few chunks in there. I don't know if you can see that, but we're just gonna leave it and say that it's good. And then we're gonna get started on putting in the muffin tray. I'm a little bit nervous that it's gonna be harder just because these are much smaller, the actual like holes, but we'll, we'll do it together and see how it goes. So we're just gonna put some on the bottom of each one and then I'm gonna take it kind of up the sides of it so that it should cover some of the sides of it as well. I don't mind if it gets a little bit messy on the outside, I think that's just bound to happen with this sort of dessert. Since these are really small, I'm gonna use this baby spoon that I have and I'm just gonna take it kind of up along the sides. And it says to go up about halfway. So I'm gonna, I mean, this is more like two thirds of the way up, but I think that'll be okay. The coconut oil makes chocolate really smooth. If you just melt the chocolate chips, I feel like it's not nearly as smooth. So I really like to do that even if the recipe didn't call for it. The chocolate is in. So now I want it to set before I add the middle cookie dough part. And I will admit, I just checked my freezer to make sure before I started this that I could actually fit this in the freezer because I have done it before where I've made a dessert that has to be frozen and I just don't have space for that container in the freezer. But this should work, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes or so. I am back now to do the filling. I took a little break, but I am going to add in a quarter cup of peanut butter. The recipe actually calls for cashew butter. I don't have that. It might have more prominent flavor, you know, tastes more like peanut butter. Cashew butter is more mild, but I think this should start, still work out well. I also just bought this jar spatula, so it's pretty narrow, you can tell, and I bought it so I could stir my sourdough starter up with it, but I thought it would work really well for this. That was unsweetened peanut butter. It's just made with, let me check, but it's just made with peanuts and salt. So I'm not sure if this maybe won't be quite as sweet as the original recipe would be with, that, with like a sweetened nut butter, but give it a try. And then I'm adding a vanilla. So it's supposed to be a teaspoon. I'm just gonna kind of not measure exactly, but that should be about a teaspoon. Now we're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna add in the dry ingredients and what really sold me on this recipe was it actually calls for malt powder. I don't know if you've had like a malted milkshake or anything like that, or you know, Whoppers or something that has that malt flavor, but I love that malt flavor. So I actually have this recipe from Half Baked Harvest. I keep throwing away my measuring utensils and I still need them. So I'm just gonna kind of approximate. I did make some chocolate malt cookies from Half Baked Harvest as well, and I thought those were really good. So I just did the malt powder, and then I'm gonna do, this is almond flour, so we can eat this raw. And I measured out approximately four tablespoons, which is a quarter cup. 
and then I'm just gonna give this a stir. So I'm gonna stir this up and then I'm also gonna add in some chocolate chips. I was supposed to have mini chocolate chips. I did not realize this when I last placed a grocery order. I'm not sure if I added too much of the almond flour, but it's really dry. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of maple syrup. I figured maple syrup, honey will go really well together. And this way, hopefully it'll be a little bit more of a wet mixture. Now we're doing two tablespoons of these chocolate chips. Even this actually looks a little bit dry, but I'm not gonna add any more liquid because hopefully we'll just be able to kind of squish it together with our fingers and make it a nice consistency that can go in the chocolate cups. Okay, here it is out of the freezer. It's definitely frozen. Just trying not to crack them because you know, it's just silicone. It's not like a hard sheet or anything. Now I'm just gonna use my hands, I think. And since these are just mini muffins, I'm gonna do one teaspoon balls. The original recipe calls for two. And then again, I'm just gonna try to put one chocolate chip in each. I'm gonna put them in, and then I'm going to smash it down with my finger. And that way it should hopefully get in you know, the whole area. So that way each time you get a bite of this, you'll get a bite of cookie dough as well. Actually, I'm gonna try a little bit, just see how I think it tastes. I like it. I think it's good. It's a little bit sweet. You can't taste the peanut butter too much, but it doesn't taste exactly like cookie dough, but I think it is pretty close. I mean, it's definitely good. I started off so neat and then I just kind of wanted to be quicker. So it got a lot more messy. But I'm just gonna take it and smash it down. So it just kind of covers all of the chocolate. And I did get my finger a little bit wet. That way it doesn't stick to my finger. And now it says to freeze this, but I'm just gonna skip that step just because I kind of want to move on from this recipe. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add the chocolate directly to the top. I definitely did not do even pieces of the cookie dough. Some of them are a lot fuller than others. I ran out of chocolate, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more chocolate chips and some more coconut oil to this. I won't add a ton and I'll just microwave it for another minute and a half so that it melts and add that to the top of the rest of them. So I added about a teaspoon of the coconut oil and I'm just gonna add maybe like a quarter cup of chocolate chips and hope that that's enough. Okay, so here's that second batch of chocolate. I'm just stirring it up and then I'm gonna cover all of the rest of them. And my other chocolate is definitely starting to harden. So I really need to work fast so that I can make sure that I can spread the other chocolate still to make it look nicer. As I'm editing, I just wanna let you know that I definitely waited too long and the chocolate was a bit hard. So it didn't spread very easily and look quite as nice as I wanted it to. I don't know if you can see, but the ones that I waited to smooth out, definitely the chocolate got too hard and it does not look super nice. But the ones that I instantly smoothed out, it looks way nicer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this back in the freezer so that the chocolate can completely harden on all of them. And in case you're interested, I got the chocolate malt cookie dough cup recipe from this cookbook, the Half Baked Har Harvest Everyday Cookbook. And I will link a recipe from online if I can find it. If not, you know, you can check this book out from the library. That's where I got this book. My next recipe is gonna be pizza roll-ups. This is actually the third time I've made this recipe in the last week or so. I did already film this, but the footage is unfortunately gone. Um, it got deleted by accident, but I'm gonna add some olive oil just so my dough doesn't stick. I already have my oven set to 400. It's preheating right now. And I made this double batch of pizza dough earlier this morning. And I actually used the skinny pizza dough recipe, I'll link it below, and I only added half the amount of yeast, and I added some sourdough. I didn't do like exact measurements or anything like that. But this is actually what I did last time. I used my sourdough starter, that way I didn't have to discard any, and it just kind of replaced some yeast. So it worked well last time, and my dough looks pretty bubbly and ready to go this time. So it looks like it worked again this time currently have it on a scale and I'm just weighing out the amount of dough that I want and I want about 16 ounces so I think this will be really perfect. So all I want to do 
is I want to take it and I want to roll it out into an 11 by 16 rectangle. So I have about 11 by 16 baking sheet. So I just kind of use that as a guideline to actually cut my parchment. And then I just don't take the dough all the way to the edge. It's not, you don't have to be super particular. And you could definitely use store-bought pizza dough if you have that, or you could make your own pizza dough like me. You know, do whatever works for you. I'm using this Rayo's Frau's Marmara. We really like it. And I will say I did make it twice um, before making it the third time to actually film just because we really do genuinely love this recipe. And it's super convenient if you want to freeze it. And we did freeze it. It works really well to just reheat in the microwave. We brought it on a picnic. It's good cold. If you like cold pizza, um, it's kind of like, it reminds me of a cinnamon roll, but it's a savory flavor. We did run out of sauce, so we're just going to have to use only about half of the sauce that the recipe calls for, which will be okay, but it's not ideal. I'm just going to use the back of this and just kind of rub it on. I thought the ratio of sauce and cheese to dough was absolutely perfect last time. So this might be a little bit drier, but it might be less messy because it was really messy. I actually just went grocery shopping, so you'd think I'd have all of the ingredients for the recipes I'm making. But I actually purposely did not buy cashew butter just because we already had peanut butter. But I don't have mozzarella cheese either, but I do love just Parmesan cheese on pizza. Just has a bit more flavor, you know, so I think it's really good. So I'm doing a couple of cups of cheese. You could do pepperoni on here if you like pepperoni. I think that would be good. Veggies would be good on here too, just keeping it really simple. I'm gonna add on some garlic powder and Italian seasoning just for a little bit of extra flavor. And especially since I don't have all of the sauce that I wanna put on here, this will help give it a bit more flavor. And I'm actually going to use another muffin tray for this, just the regular size muffin tray. It's not an everyday occurrence that I use both muffin trays in the same day. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. And I want to roll it pretty tight. It's okay if it's messy. And I'm just going to roll it up. And then we're going to slice it into 12 slices to put in the 12 muffin cups. It broke a little bit, but that's okay. Just means a little of the cheese gets nice and crispy on the outside when you bake it in the oven. And I should have done this first thing, but I'm just gonna slide a cutting board right underneath it. That way I'm not cutting directly on my counter. It does look like I may have um, rolled it out a bit long, but that's okay. So now I'm just gonna cut it in pieces and make them as even as I can. Actually, I think it's pretty good. So again, it doesn't matter if things kind of fall out a little bit, it's totally okay. And I'm going to put it in here. If you don't have a muffin tray that's non-stick, you just you spray it with some oil and it'll be just fine. I found that the one on the ends are my least favorite because they don't have as much of the sauce and the cheese. I do think the sauce to cheese ratios are just perfect if you do three quarters of a cup or the 16 ounce or 14 to 16 ounce measurement of the pizza dough. And I don't want to waste any of the cheese, so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it on top, just some of the cheese that fell off over here. If you eat these fresh out of the oven, the cheese on the bottom gets a tiny bit crispy and it's just super soft. The dough definitely cooks all the way through. I cook it for 24 minutes and it's just perfectly cooked. And since I'm using a silicone tray, I like to just put it on just a regular sheet pan so it's much more sturdy. So I'm going to go ahead and bake this up now. I just put that in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and clean up here. And I did want to mention that I actually do it for about half the time on the top rack and half the time on the bottom rack for the pizza rolls because I just find that on one level, the top cooks more and on the other level the bottom cooks more and this way it provides like a really even cook but that really depends on your oven and how your oven cooks the next recipe while i'm waiting for the pizza rolls to cook that i'm going to make is i'm going to make a roasted vegetable and gnocchi sheet pan dish and i have made this a couple of other times i may have even included it in a video a long time ago but 
I love this recipe. It is great for spring and summer vegetables and or like culinary vegetables and it's just so easy. It's so tasty. I also do love to put chicken sausage in it, but today I just decided to keep a vegetarian. I like to use a non-refrigerated gnocchi. So I just have this that I got from Trader Joe's. I think it's pretty new there. I just saw it maybe a few weeks ago. And then I have a couple of pints of cherry tomatoes and a couple of zucchini. And we're gonna go ahead and get everything washed and ready to go. Here's the zucchini. I got these at a great price at my grocery store this week. And it's a good thing I was using up my tomatoes because they're starting to look a little bit sad. I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up this zucchini. I think I'll just go ahead and just slice them. I have made this recipe before with a variety of different vegetables. I've done broccoli, I have done chicken sausage multiple times, but I always do cherry tomatoes and I've done asparagus. I mean, really any vegetable that you like would, that would roast well would go really well in this. Now I just put everything on the sheet pan, so I'm starting with the gnocchi. I've actually even used this, the cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's. And I didn't like it quite as much just because there's already so many veggies. I kind of just like a normal gnocchi, but you know, if you want to make it low carb. Okay, I'm just gonna take the whole towel and dump it out. And I love the mixture of olive oil and butter. It's so good. It's just such a nice flavor and it works so well, but I wanna be really quick. My two-year-old just woke up from her nap, so I'm just doing olive oil today. And I'm gonna season it with some pepper salt, garlic. I do like quite a bit of garlic on here. It has such a great flavor. And then some Italian seasoning. It's really good with fresh basil. I actually do have fresh basil. So around dinner time, I'll just cut the fresh basil up and put it on top. And after I roast it for a little while, I'm gonna add Parmesan cheese to the top and then cook it for a little bit longer. And that's so good as well. I'm just gonna kind of mix it up to so the olive oil and all the seasonings is on everything. I do like to double gnocchi a lot, but we actually have leftover chicken from dinner two nights ago, so I'm going to use that. Just we'll have that on the side along with this. So you really want to add a lot of seasonings so it tastes so good. And then of course the Parmesan just amps up the flavor and just it's nice and cheesy and it's so tasty. But anything that you do, any vegetables that you use, you do want to make sure that they're cut to a good size just so that nothing burns. I like my zucchini kind of um, crisp, so I didn't mind cutting a little bit thin, but you just want your gnocchi to be fully cooked and then you want those tomatoes to kind of start to burst a little bit so they can get nice and roasted and have that great roasted tomato flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. I'll roast this once the pizza rolls come out of the oven and now I wanna take those cookie dough cups out of the freezer and give one a try and see how it is. Here they are. Definitely not as pretty as I would have liked, but the ones that I smoothed out right away are so beautiful. I think I'll go ahead and give the small, not one of the small, not very pretty ones a try. Here's what it looks like. It's good. I don't get a super like malt flavor and I also think it would be better if it wasn't frozen um, so I'll go ahead and refrigerate it and I'll let you know what I think about it once they're not frozen here these are they look so good I can't wait to go ahead and eat them to wrap everything up I definitely wanted to show you the final product of all of these recipes so here are the chocolate cups now that they aren't frozen anymore this silicone tray is super nice. It just pops right out, but I really did like it. It didn't ever really have a super strong malt flavor, but I think we would miss it if it didn't have the malt in there. So I definitely recommend this recipe. I also let the pizza rolls cool a little bit so I could touch those and you could see the cheese kind of caramelized on the bottom. The roll is nice and crispy kind of on the top and on the bottom, but it's just very well cooked in the middle. It's perfect. It's fluffy. And now I just took the gnocchi and veggies out of the oven. I'm adding some Parmesan cheese and I'm going to put it back in the oven to let the Parmesan cheese melt. And now I'm taking it out of the oven. So it's completely done. And 
I really like it when the tomatoes kind of burst and when the gnocchi gets a little bit crispy on the outside, but it's still really tender and soft on the inside, you definitely need kind of a good amount of butter, olive oil for that to happen. Otherwise, the gnocchi stays soft, but we love this recipe. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for spending time watching this and hanging out with me, and I'll leave any of the recipes in the description. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you're new. And I love sharing what I'm cooking in the kitchen. I'll see you next time. Bye.